I'm Brian Lilly, lying to scare the public. That is the topic of tonight's byline. Justin Trudeau is lying to the public and he's trying to scare you on the issue of guns. Perhaps more worrisome, he's also advocating taking power away from politicians and giving it to police. We showed you this graphic that the Liberals started using on social media last week. Trudeau and the Liberals are spreading this online, trying to get you or your ill-informed friends or relatives to believe that rifles and handguns will soon be left lying in cars and trucks at supermarkets, the area of restaurants, you know, shopping malls, all these things, just waiting for thieves to come and get them. He's saying the same thing in front of TV cameras to reporters who aren't really questioning him on any of this. For two reasons, we will not be able to support uh, C-42. Uh, first of all, uh, because of the loosening of transport uh, regulations, which means that it would be very possible uh, for, uh, in any given supermarket parking lot, uh, for uh, firearms to be in the trunks of a car and therefore uh, easily accessed by criminals uh, willing to break in. Uh, secondly, we feel that the classification of firearms, particularly what is an assault rifle and what is not, uh, should be uh, left to uh, proper police authorities uh, and not to politicians. He's repeating these crazy claims in the House of Commons, but at least their Prime Minister Stephen Harper is there slapping them down. Watch this whole exchange from last Wednesday. Mr. Speaker, C-42 would allow handguns and assault weapons to be freely transported in a trunk anywhere within a province, even left parked outside the Canadian Tire or a local hockey arena. Imagine if the car carrying these weapons were broken into or stolen. This bill also takes classification decisions on guns away from police and puts them in the hands of politicians. Both these provisions threaten Canadians' safety. Will the government remove them? From the right honourable Prime Minister. Well, Mr. Speaker, as I just said, and I will repeat, the statements the Liberal Party leader has made are recklessly irresponsible and false. The fact of the matter is, under this law, current law, and this law, Mr. Speaker, uh, firearms can only be transported between specific locations. They must be in a locked case, they must be in a trunk, and they must be unloaded. And Mr. Speaker, those are the facts, but we, we expect this kind of distortion from the party that brought in the long gun registry and is itching to bring it back. The new firearms law being debated in Parliament will not allow anyone to keep a restricted rifle or handgun in their car while they go shopping at the mall or take their kids to the arena for a hockey game. It's that simple. The Liberals are trying to use the images of Americans with guns in their glove compartments or under the seats to scare voters, and they're even using the anniversary of the Ecole Polytechnic shooting to drum up that fear. At least when they speak in French, they are. But the new law before Parliament right now won't let any licensed gun owner keep their guns in their cars and in any ways they're not allowed to do now is to go about their daily lives. It will only result in simplified paperwork for all. Right now, after you pass your safety course, pass the test, the background check, and you're licensed to buy your gun, well, you then need to apply for a permit to transport that gun if it's restricted or in any way. Now, this does away, this new law does away with a separate permit. It ties that permit to transport to your gun license. The Liberals are fear-mongering, plain and simple. And they were at it again last Thursday night. After we debunked the, the first claim, the Liberals began using this tweet. They're now saying that the new Common Sense Firearms Act will take power away from police and give it to politicians. That is simply not true. What it will do is give politicians, our elected officials, more oversight into the gun classification system. The gun control laws passed by the Liberals gave that power to Cabinet exclusively. It's referred to as an order of the governor in council. That's another fancy way of saying Cabinet. For the most part, though, this authority has been delegated to police, but it's not a police power, and nor should it be. Let me ask you, do we trust the police to determine what is legal and illegal in any other area of our life? No, nor should we. The police are there to enforce the laws, not to pass them, but to enforce them. We don't allow police to determine if murder is legal or illegal. We don't allow them to make our drug laws. We don't even allow them to make our traffic laws. Why would we let police make gun laws? And if they did make a law or a decision that the public really hated, let me ask you, how would we go about changing things? 
We don't vote for the head of the RCMP. We don't even vote for the head of our local police force in this country. These are all appointed bureaucrats, exactly the wrong type of people to be making laws. Too many politicians say we need to, we need to take these decisions and make them, make them the decision of an arm's length group. And that's essentially what the liberals will argue here. They will claim that police and not politicians should decide what guns Canadians can have. But I say no. I say put the politics into it. More politics. Let's say Stephen Harper or, heaven forbid, Justin Trudeau as Prime Minister made a decision about guns and gun control that we really don't like. Well, then we as voters can throw them out. We can change the government. But you cannot do that with appointed police officials. So not only is Justin Trudeau fear-mongering, he's also suggesting something very dangerous, very dangerous to our democracy. A final point. As Trudeau is trying to make you more afraid of guns, as he's trying to tell you that you need to be protected, new data released today from Stats Canada shows that fewer Canadians are killed with guns. And those that are killed with guns are killed with handguns, most of them illegal. Canada had 505 murders last year. That's down from 543 in 2012, or put another way, 1.44 victims per 100,000 of population, or the lowest homicide rate since 1966. There were just 131 homicides involving guns in 2013. That's down 41 from 2012. And that means that in the first full year without the gun registry, Murders with guns went down. Stabbing, still the most common form of murder in Canada, they were up. But gun murders, they were down. From the stats can released this morning, the majority, 68%, of firearms-related homicides were committed with the use of a handgun, a trend that has held over the last 20 years. Despite this trend, the rate of handgun homicides reached its lowest point since 1998. Fewer intimate partner deaths or homicides, as StatsCan classifies them, and even fewer gang murders, although interesting here, the number of gang murders, 85, roughly corresponds to the number of handgun murders, 89. Gun violence in Canada is not the problem Justin Trudeau and the Liberals would have you believe. But facts like this won't scare the public into buying his push that only he and the Liberals can protect us from gun crime, so to heck with the facts, let's bring on the fear. Here's my advice. Don't give in to the fear. Get the facts. Educate yourself and then those around you. And that's the byline.